Munich, Germany, a country considered to be at the leading edge of green architecture in Europe. It is in this city, deemed Europe's capital of solar energy, that Thomas Herzog began his career. Today, during a quick stop at his newest building, the architect carefully inspects the evolution of his latest innovation, a double facade in which interior and exterior panels have separate functions. This is the inner one, which is uh, highly performing glass, and we have a second one, which is hung from this large beam here in, in two elements. One is longer, in, the, in this direction, and it's transparent glass, and the other one, which is smaller, and in between these sheets of glass, is translucent. The interior facade insulates the building, while the exterior facade protects it from the noise of the street and direct sunlight. The design of the combined panels create a very unique effect. And so we, we come up with, a, with one facade, which is more or less in one direction here, running out, and outside it's dancing. We didn't want to have a kind of office building in the, in the architectural expression, and so we got a new scale outside. Makes it a bit different. A building that includes several of the architect's technological innovations, research and development are a given with each new project elaborated. The town of Pollock on the outskirts of Munich. It is here that Thomas Herzog tested just 20 years ago the concept of a bioclimatic house. At the time, the idea of making the house's surrounding environment and climate the core of the building plan was almost unheard of. First priority, designing the house so that all living areas face south, thus absorbing direct solar radiation during the day. Second priority, the invention of warm walls. Along the southern side, panels with thermal insulation are sandwiched between interior and exterior walls. Look, in the middle of these two layers of glass, we have a material which is a polycarbonate. It's little tubes inside of which the light is going to be reflected and transported automatically. So behind this, we have a prefabricated concrete panel, which is very massive, very heavy. And the outside of this concrete panel is painted black matte. And that is why this uh, element is going to heat up the concrete during the daytime and in, in the night, when there's no radiation on the surface here, the heated up panel gives all the heat to, this, to the room behind. Additional innovations of the time included climbing plants providing shade to the house during the summer, and a greenhouse on the west side of the building. Creating a buffer zone between the inside and outside this interior garden protects the house from wind and rain during the winter season. And to create a slimming effect for the entire structure, the architect conceived what he likes to call the house's backbone. It's going through the whole construction, including the pavements here. And when you look to the walls, you see even this part here, this is around 30 centimeters, and you can follow this zone to the very top and see there are the outlets for the bathrooms, for the toilets, for the kitchen, which are locked to this zone. We have inside all the tubes, all the channels, all the air ducts, and this is absolutely necessary. Have it in a central zone, giving the building a symmetry so then you can attach what is needed from the sides. A concept of order and discipline that is now a given in many homes, Thomas Herzog was one of the first to put the system to the test. 
Collaborating closely with scientists, Thomas Herzog has always attributed great importance to research, trials, and the building of models. I'm sure that the real experience is linked to the necessity uh, to build three-dimensional models, objects, um, to take your hands, to think with your fingers, to create something as well as control it. The Design Center in Linz, Austria, an international congress and exhibition center spanning 10,000 square meters. The objective here was to light the space naturally while avoiding glare and excessive heat gains. Reinterpreting the 19th century glass palace theme, Thomas Herzog chose to invent a unique light grid system that could be built into glass panels. We have 220,000 pieces of these elements which are inserted in the envelope of the building. It's very lightweight, it's only 16 millimeters high, extremely slender, and it's a kind of optical instrument which reflects the sun very much and uh, at the same time is transmissive. You can see it from the shadow, though it's closed. When I turn it over 180 degrees, it's permissive. Just 16 millimeters deep, the retro-reflecting grid allows indirect light to enter while excluding direct light. About 95% of reflection to prevent from heating it up. If not so, we would have a kind of heating device on top, especially in summer, which is terrible. Achieving its creator's main goals, the building consumes 75% less electricity than similar structures of the same size. Requiring green buildings and designing green roofs like we do in Munich is a good thing and even a pleasure to look at. But it's not simply good intentions that are going to change the world. Our responsibilities go much deeper than that. We need to get in the habit of questioning things more often. We need to elaborate new models and complete the projects that we begin. It's only then that humanity will have a chance. Und die wirklich, wirklich Chancen haben. Und nur dann hat die Menschheit als Ganzes.